Welcome to the last week's uh, lecture, The Cultural Heritage of Minorities in Middle East. We already understood uh, and discussed in the last uh, or the previous weeks, cultural heritage helps shaping our identity. Our heritage becomes part of what we are. Uh, our expression of this identity shows others what we value. It highlights also our um, values and uh, uh, priorities. Moreover, our heritage provides clues to our past and how uh, our society has evolved. It helps us examine uh, our history and um, traditions and enables us develop awareness about ourselves. It helps us to um, understand and explain uh, why we are what we are. Uh, thus, in this uh, lecture of, of uh, last lecture of this course, we will be highlighting some important topics uh, in order to get a clear understanding of the heritage concept and value as a whole. Uh, in this lecture, we will talk about some definitions of the word minorities and indigenous people. Uh, what is the minorities heritage and uh, review uh, the um, situation or status of this concept in the literature, museums and national and international policies. Um, we will be talking about different approaches and acknowledgement to this type or this uh, concept of heritage. Uh, also, moreover, we will be talking about the role of cultural heritage uh, of minorities in preserving and shaping uh, solid identities. Uh, minority is a difficult concept to deal with, as there is no internationally agreed definition that specifies what, which uh, groups are minorities uh, and which are not. Minority is not simply a um, neutral term, but it is rather a psychological concept uh, laden with meanings. Uh, even in uh, consolidated democracies a par uh, or parliamentary minority, for example, by uh, definition lakes power. Any definition of the concept of minority must account for both uh, objective and subjective factors. A minority must be a separate uh, ethnic, linguistic, religious, or uh, secretional group, and clearly uh, perceiving itself as a minority. Uh, a widely uh, accepted definition is that of, uh, for example, uh, Francesco Caporti, uh, who believes that uh, a minority must be uh, numerically um, uh, inferior to the rest of the population of a state and has to be in a non-dominant uh, position. Uh, the later principle of non-dominance might create some difficulties in, in, in defining minorities in Middle East. For example, a numerical minority in Syria, uh, the Alawites, are in power. So uh, uh, was uh, the uh, Sunni numerical minority in Iraq before uh, or uh, until uh, the uh, overthrow of uh, Saddam Hussein. Uh, so the following the uh, mainly uh, the human rights committee uh, uh, explanation or, or understanding of the concept of minorities explaining some criteria for example to, to be considered as a minority uh, so indigenous people make uh, constitute uh, linguistic religious or ethnic minorities in the states in which they find themselves both are not uh, mutually exclusive nor under undermine any applicable right as a minority or indigenous people. The territory to consider in determining whether or not a group is linguistic, uh, religious, or ethnic minority is the entire territory of a state and not one of its political or territorial uh, subunits. Uh, one of the main objectives 
uh, criteria for determining uh, whether a group is a minority in, 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 in a state is a numerical one. So a minority, it could be like that could be a simple definition or simple criteria. A minority in the territory of a state uh, means it's not the majority. Objectively, that means that uh, an ethnic, religious, or linguistic group makes up less than half of the population of a country. The Middle East, uh, like many other regions uh, of the world, is heterogeneous and comprises of numerous ethnic, uh, national, religious, and linguistic uh, societies, groups, and uh, sectorations. Much of uh, the troubles uh, facing this region, actually, or the Middle East, revolve around the treatment or mistreatment of its minority population. Most of the post-Ottoman states are yet to evolve a national identity that would encompass and reflect their multi-ethnic social uh, composition. Uh, at the same time, uh, discussions on minorities have often been uh, controversial and politically loaded stimulously. They don't um, hesitate to use the treatment of minorities as a useful foreigner policy instrument. Whenever an extreme or external uh, enemy or internal uh, crisis threatens a society over its identity, minorities become the prime and immediate uh, targets. Today, states in Middle East have different approaches to, to, to their religious and uh, ethnic minor, minor, minorities. Christian political uh, participation in Syria and Jordan, for example, is uh, based on individual involvement, whereas minorities in Lebanon, Iran, Sudan, uh, um, uh, Lebanon, uh, I don't know how I mentioned Lebanon, participate through a quota system based on an uh, affiliation to a religious or ethnic community. Religious and ethnic minority uh, activities and the minority's identity uh, politics are manifested in, in various ways according to the local dynamics between majority and minority present and past. In recent years, political uh, troubleness, economic uh, stagnation, and the growth of uh, religious movements have led to a massive um, immigration of some of these minorities. To properly understand the contemporary challenges facing museums in the region in their uh, construction of cultural identities, we need to uh, situate them within uh, a larger historical trajectory of heritage development and exhibitionary practices. Uh, in the Middle East and North Africa, practices of collections and heritage preservation operating inside a Western style authorized uh, heritage disclosure, as uh, Smith uh, terms it, developed in the 19th century as a result of uh, high rank uh, uh, rich people interest on the part of the Ottoman and European intellectuals of Near East uh, archaeology. While rooms uh, detected to indigenous materials culture, uh, usually called Muslim art or Islamic antiquities, began to be established in, in museums and libraries uh, in late 19th century until the early 20th uh, century, local and foreigner research uh, concentrated almost exclusively on archaeological remains dating from antiquities. Interest in indigenous material culture developed in the early 20th century. This was connected to uh, um, a change in approach to colonial governors more than uh, uh, generally. In colon uh, colonial museums, objects were classified according to their purpose, jewelry, uh, clothing, etc., or their manufacture like glass, pottery, wood, and were categorized following the colonial uh, ethnographic imagining uh, of the region, uh, Bedouin, Berber, uh, Muslim, uh, Arab, Jewish, etc. Artifacts were uh, rarely exhibited as national culture, but as uh, ethnographic data or uh, decorative art, ultimately serving um, uh, military and economic agendas within uh, the colonial uh, uh, and outside them. 
uh, upon achieving independence, Arab countries capitalized on cultural institutions and production. Uh, in the 1950s and 1960s, states such as Algeria, Tunisia, Iraq, Syria established governmental bodies that granted public funding for the arts, while the Arabian Peninsula and some other countries uh, of the Levant heritage production and preservation took shape later in the uh, 70s, for example. The mid-1950s also saw uh, the monumental understanding of heritage challenged and the emergence of a new interest in uh, minor uh, forms of culture, uh, variously known in the region as Turat al-Shab or popular heritage, folklore, or al-Fanun al-Taqlidiya or al al-Shaub, like popular art uh, traditions. In the context of early independence, museums were understood as key sites for public education and cultural socialization designed to instill among uh, citizens of a new countries a sense of belonging and uh, direction and served as active uh, nation building instrument along with the iconography, postage, stamps, banknotes and festivals to articulate national narratives and forge a distinct relationship between population and territory. Even when that land was uh, often understood as a fraction uh, of a greater area of reference, the Arab nation, greater Syria, the Maghreb, or the Muslim Ummah. At the same time, the 1970s and 80s witnessed development that paved the way for greater representation of minority uh, communities within cultural landscape of the MENA region or uh, uh, Middle East and North Africa. Indeed, the 1970s uh, represented a period of awareness of the necessity for uh, governments across the region to revisit their relation with heritage. Previously considered as a, an academic field, heritage start to be understood as an important factor um, in eco economic, social, and cultural development. And this understanding was largely encouraged by global heritage players such as UNESCO um, or uh, ICROM, ICOMOS, ALESCO, Arab Language Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, ICOM, uh, the International Council uh, of Museums. And we already noticed that, or we talked about this development in the previous weeks. And that comes with major intervention in each country in uh, encouraging a heritage-based uh, approach to cultural uh, management. The recent movements that have uh, evolved in the Middle East and North Africa since 2011 for all their unexpected uh, ramification and limitations, they have been successful in reopening in a more urgent fashion the question of state society, the social structure, and what uh, so-called minority groups across the region, including ethnic and religious minorities, as well as the um, socially marginalized ones, uh, uh, disabled, women, homeless, people, uh, uh, migrants, and refugees. As the Middle East and North Africa region continues to experience profound geopolitical, economic, and social transformation within the scheme, uh, heritage and museum are likely to be mobilized by both governmental and civic uh, society actors to mediate new social and cultural reality. For example, in the Syrian case, nevertheless, it should be noted that uh, a sense of national identity uh, what exists Syria has a resilient sense of identity based on the concept of a shared citizenship around a common history and supported by a long and rich cultural heritage. This is perhaps in part due to the manner in which the complex overlapping and layer characteristics of tribal ethnic situation and regional identities have managed to coexist with uh, national identities for so long, despite uh, the suppression or different type of suppression uh, the Syrian uh, uh, citizens uh, are facing and were facing. In this context, museums Asian sites and uh, monuments can provide legitimizing uh, spaces in which sp uh, um, different identities can be both recognized and shared. They can uh, uh, become spaces in which Syria can uh, be um, 
thought to reconnect with the, its uh, symbols through a ritual of uh, genuine shared citizenship to help create a shared sense of identity in, uh, um, in the nation uh, state. Museums, ancient sites, and monuments uh, effectively become the uh, vessel for identity creation, community outreach, and co uh, existing. Similarity uh, uh, situation can be applied to the um, festivals. Uh, the festivals can now be, or, or in the new situation, can uh, be uh, re purposed and encouraged to the uh, encouraging the coexistent uh, concept of regional identity within the national identity cultural diversity and minority uh, protection incorporate some of the earliest articulation of cultural rights and the uh, protection of intangible cultural property in international for example, cultural right and cultural diversity case, the uh, elaboration of cultural rights uh, to be enjoyed by minorities has a length history uh, in, in international law, which is firmly tied to uh, ensuring the preservation and development of cultural identity of particular groups. Since the end of the Cold War, several international and regional instruments uh, covering uh, cultural diversity, minorities, and indigenous peoples have expanded and defined uh, the parameters of cultural rights in the international law. Um, in the previous week, we discussed about uh, uh, the um, 2001 UNESCO Universal Declaration on Cultural Diversity. Uh, so uh, this uh, declaration followed several UNESCO initiatives which considered the importance of culture, uh, culture and cultural policies, cultural right in the context of challenges created by globalization, pluralism, and diversity. The, the primary draft uh, convention uh, definition of culture uh, described culture as the whole complex of distinctive spiritual material intellectual and emotional features that characterize a society or social group including not only uh, the arts and letters but also uh, moods of life uh, ways of living together the fundamental rights of the human being value system tradition and belief Furthermore, it's not that uh, these are uh, closely linked with cultural diversity, peace, and development. Uh, it recognized the cultural diversity uh, implies as a commitment to the human rights of uh, disadvantaged or discriminated groups, including minorities. These rights included uh, also uh, free access to the expression of their own and other groups' cultures and participation in the cultural life of uh, society as a whole. Uh, we can notice or uh, this approach, this this uh, 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 development of understanding of uh, cultural uh, uh, heritage of minorities in the case of Sudan. Sudan is the lar largest post-colonial country in Africa, having expensive cultural, ethnic, uh, linguistic, geographical, and religious uh, diversity. Uh, 2005. Uh, uh, the, uh, a comprehensive uh, peace agreement uh, uh, was signed between North and South Sudan. Uh, this is an ever existing difference of cultural uh, cultures in Sudan, uh, the tangible heritage in North Sudan and the intangible heritage in South Sudan are way uh, diverse. The most important aspect of, the, of this agreement was advancing the use of cultural heritage as a means uh, to eliminate identity conflict and encourage interaction between various cultures. Uh, the second step uh, involved capacity building and the training for preservation of ancient sites and museums as a method of reconciliation. The policies emphasized on the need of understanding of cultural uh, uh, diversity for the country to uh, to treat ahead on the way to modernization using the depth knowledge and perception of the past. This would help in administration of the southern state in accordance with their conventional uh, laws and traditions. The focus on construction of museum education programs, capacity building project and policy uh, setting were not only to develop state infrastructure, but also 
as a method of political re, uh, 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 reconciliation as the museums had uh, on display the official recognition of all minorities of the country. Uh, propagation of cultural heritage and diversity also led to uh, uh, manifold uh, uh, petitions for uh, identity uh, recognition. This diversion uh, from the intended outcome of the policy indicates towards the need for reformation in the concept of identity to restore peace in Sudan. There should be uh, also uh, or was noticed that uh, emphasized on the intellectual uh, exchange and dialogue uh, between various social groups to bring them together as a nation to focus on their similarities than diversities. One of uh, cultural heritage roles in the uh, context of building identities and co coexistence uh, among the communities is the peace building process. Warfare is about destroying identity, self, and uh, to a larger extent, hum humanity. By targeting heritage, destruction uh, of bridges, mosques, temples, churches, and others, uh, the, the uh, uh, Azilient aims to cleave uh, the connection to the past and vision into the future of the victims. Culture uh, plays a central role in identifying the root uh, cause of conflict and facilitates uh, in determining gaps for ensuring um, everlasting peace and security. One of the biggest challenges we, uh, 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 it, uh, we as a human or the, uh, the, the conflict areas facing today is to unite people to share a peaceful coexistence. It is through cultural programs one uh, can foster uh, respect and value of diversity, understanding of the universal elements in all cultures, helping to humanize the other. And in, in, in post-conflict situation, situations, cultural heritage becomes an important element in restoring of communities, aiding them to uh, regain a sense of normality and reconnect with their identities. Uh, for example, uh, as we all know, Iraq is home to some of the most ancient stories uh, known to humanity. The cultural artifacts, traditions, and stories uh, of these diverse communities are irreplaceable, which is what uh, 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 complains us to protect uh, the remain, actually. Uh, preserving and promoting the heritage of different Iraqi communities is, is a critical step towards uh, communal healing and long-term sustainability. Thus, a very interesting project run by local community organizations uh, and international organizations also to digitize uh, and conserve thousands of pieces from um, their collections, uh, including manuscripts, photographs, and other archival materials. The project also provides um, uh, training and equipment uh, to the teams uh, uh, to establish digitizing labs uh, and document uh, intangible cultural heritage, such as stories, songs, and traditional uh, practices. Also, they are developing in-house exhibition to share this precious artifacts and uh, traditional uh, traditions with 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 the, to share it with the whole world as usual uh, these are the references used uh, for this um, presentation for this uh, week's lecture uh, please read in and also check out the other supported supporting materials uploaded on the classroom drive so what we can conclude uh, from this lecture, uh, cultural interactions can encourage respect and dialogue among uh, formally divided communities and can foster a shared sense of ownership for cultural heritage, of, of, of cultural heritage. It is uh, at the end of the day, the people that have uh, the power of dialogue in their hands and in their lives. Their work is representing the pools of, of the citizens and it is uh, crucial in developing uh, a progressive society. Thank you so much, and I hope this course was uh, an added value, or at least 
contributed in providing uh, wider knowledge and understanding uh, of cultural heritage. 